had no choice. With trembling hand, he took the pestle and brought it down on his manhood. The pain was unbearable, but his family's safety was all that mattered. Sarah screamed and ran to John. Oh my God, baby, are you okay? John greeted his teeth, tears streaming down his face. I I'm okay, Sarah. Just make sure the kids are safe. The leader of the I see you, my heart, baby. A lady of all man's dreams You be the one way they make me the Hey guys! Have you ever felt safe in your own home? I believe many of us feel safe in our home. Well, John thought he did. Until he was staring at the dark silhouette moving in his living room. His heart pounded as the cold night air crept through the open window. He never imagined a night like this would ever come. John lived in a small town with his wife, Sarah, and two children, Emily and Jack. They had a cozy home filled with laughter and love. But that night, everything changed. It was a quiet evening. Sarah was reading a book and the children were already in bed. John was finishing some work in his study when he heard a strange noise. He thought it was just the wind but then he heard it again. It was a soft thud like something falling on the floor. John got up and walked to the living room. He saw the window was open. That was odd because he was sure it had been closed. Suddenly, he felt a hand grab his shoulder. He turned around and saw a man with a mask over his face. Before John could react, two more men appeared. They pushed him into the living room and tied his hand behind his back. John tried to shout, but one of the men covered his mouth with a cloth. Stay quiet, the leader of the thieves said. He was a tall man with a scared face. His eyes were cold and cruel. If you make any noise, we will hurt your family. John's heart sank. He looked at Sarah who was now awake and staring at the intruders with wide eyes. Emily and Jack came out of the room, frightened and confused. Mom, Dad, what's happening? Emily asked, her voice shaking. It's okay, sweetie, Sarah said, trying to stay calm. Just do as they said. The leader of the thieves stepped forward. We are here for money, he said. Give us anything you have and no one will get hurt. John nodded. Please, take whatever you want. Just don't hurt my family. The men started searching the house, taking money, jewelry, and anything valuable they could find. John felt helpless. He wished he could do something to protect his family, but he was tied up and at their mercy. After they had taken everything, the leader looked at John. We have one more thing we need you to do, he said. He handed John a pestle. We need you to pound your manhood with this pestle or we will kill your entire family. John's eyes widened. What? No, please, what have I done to deserve this? Don't make me do this. The leader's eyes narrowed. You heard me. Do it or they all die. John looked at his wife and children. He had no choice. With trembling hand, he took the pestle and brought it down on his manhood. The pain was unbearable, but his family's safety was all that mattered. Sarah screamed and ran to John. Oh my God, baby, are you okay? John greeted his teeth, tears streaming down his face. I I'm okay, Sarah. Just make sure the kids are safe. The leader of the thieves then smiled. Good. Now, don't even try calling the police. If you do, we will come back and it will be worse next time. With that, the thieves left, disappearing into the night. John collapsed on the floor, clutching his injured manhood. Sarah held him, tears in her eyes. Why did this happen to us? She whispered. Once the thieves left, John called the police. Officers arrived quickly, their faces grim as they surveyed the scene. Do you have any idea who might have done this? One officer asked. 
John shook his head, but deep down a name flickered in his mind. Amanda. Years ago, John had been a different man. He was younger, more reckless, and hungry for sources. He worked for a large company in the city and had big dreams of climbing the corporate ladder. During this time, he met Amanda. Amanda was so beautiful, with long dark hair and sparkling green eyes. She was kind-hearted and always willing to help others. She worked in the same company as John, but in a different department. They met at a company party and John was immediately drawn to her. Hi, I'm John, he said, extending his hand. Amanda, she replied with a warm smile, shaking his hand. Nice to meet you. They spent the rest of the evening talking and laughing. Amanda told John about her dreams and ambitions, and John found himself genuinely interested in her. Over the next few weeks, they started dating, and Amanda quickly fell in love with John. John, however, had other plans. He saw Amanda as a way to get ahead. Amanda's father was a well-known businessman with connections that could help John's career. John decided to use this to his advantage. John, my father invited us to dinner, Amanda said one evening. I think he likes you. That's great, Amanda, John replied, hiding his true intentions. I can't wait to meet him. Dinner with Amanda's father went well. John charmed him and soon he was introduced to powerful people who could help him advance his career. With Amanda's connection, John got promoted faster than he ever imagined. But as John's career soared, his feelings for Amanda faded. He started seeing her as a burden, someone who was holding him back. One evening, he decided to end things with Amanda. Amanda, we need to talk, John said, trying to sound serious. Amanda looked at him worried. What is it, John? I, I think we should break up, he said, bluntly. Amanda's eyes filled with tears. Break up? Why, John? I thought we were happy. I'm not happy anymore, John replied, looking away. I need to focus on my career, and I can't do that with you in my life. Amanda was devastated. She had given John everything, her love, her trust, her connection, and in return, he had broken her heart. She fell into a deep depression, losing her job and home. Desperation led her down a dark path, and she swore revenge on the man who ruined her life. Detective Mason, a seasoned officer, took on John's case. We need to find out why this thief targeted you, he said. John told Mercin about Amanda, his past with her, and her horrible motives for revenge. I never thought she could go this far, though she has always told me she would get at me, John said. Guilt gnawing at him. Mercy nodded. We need to find her. She might be the key to solving this. The next few days were a blur of police interviews and investigations. Mason worked tirelessly, digging into John's past and following leads. John could hardly sleep, haunted by memories of Amanda and the terrible night with the thieves. One afternoon, Mason returned with news. We found Amanda, he said. She's living in a rundown apartment on the other side of the town. John felt a mix of relief and dread. What happens now? We need to talk to her, Mason replied. She might have information about the thieves. John agreed to go with Mason. As they drove to Amanda's apartment, John thought about everything that had happened. He realized how much he had hurt Amanda and how his actions had led to this point. When they arrived, Mason knocked on the door. A few moments later, it opened and Amanda stood there. She looked worn out, but a fire still burning in her eyes. Amanda, we need to talk, Mason said. Amanda let them in, and they sat down in her small living room. The place was shabby, with peeling wallpaper and old furniture. 
It was clear that Amanda had fallen on hard times. We know about the thieves, Mason began. We believe you had something to do with it. Amanda didn't deny anything. John took everything from me, she said coldly. I just wanted him to feel a fraction of the pain I felt. Is he really still using the manhood? I told them to destroy that weapon of destruction. I am really disappointed it's still working. John felt a pang of guilt. Amanda, I am so sorry. I never meant for things to turn out this way. Amanda's eyes filled with tears. It's too late for apologies, John. You ruined my life. Mason arrested Amanda and soon after, the thieves were also caught. Justice was served, but the damage was done. Amanda was taken into custody and the police questioned her about her involvement with the thieves. John and Sarah were also to come to the police station to provide more information. As they sat in the waiting room, John held Sarah's hand tightly. He could see the fear and worry in her eyes. Sarah, I'm so sorry, he whispered. I never wanted any of this to happen. Sarah looked at him, her eyes filled with tears. John, I don't understand how you could do something like that to her. John sighed, feeling the weight of his past mistake. I was young and stupid. I thought I needed to get ahead and I used her. I didn't think about the consequences. Detective Mason came out of the interrogation room and called them in. John and Sarah followed him, their hearts heavy with worry. Inside, Amanda sat at a table, looking defeated but defiant. Amanda, Mason began, we need to understand how you got involved with these thieves. Did you hire them? Amanda looked up, her eyes cold. Yes, I did. I wanted John to suffer like I did. John's heart sank. Amanda, I never meant to hurt you. I was selfish and wrong. But what you did, it was so dangerous and could have killed us. There were kids in the house and this was about us, not them. Amanda's expression softened for a moment. John, you destroyed my life. I lost everything because of you. I wanted you to feel the same pain, to understand what it feels like to lose everything. Sarah spoke up, her voice trembling. Amanda, we have children. They were terrified that night. You didn't just hurt John, you hurt our whole family. Amanda looked down, tears streaming down her face. I never wanted to hurt the children. I just wanted John to pay. Mercy nodded. Amanda, you understand that what you did is a serious crime. You will have to face the consequences. Amanda nodded, tears falling silently. I know. I just wanted to make him understand. The thieves were brought in one by one for questioning. Each one confirmed Amanda's story. She had hired them to break into John's house and make him pound his manhood, hoping he would feel the same fear and helplessness she had felt for years. As the investigation continued, more details emerged. Amanda had struggled to survive after John left her. She lost her job and her apartment, and she had to rely on friends and shelters. Her bitterness grew over the years, fueling her desire for revenge. John stood in his empty living room, his bandaged manhood a constant reminder of that terrible night. He had lost a lot, his sense of security, his peace of mind, and his family's trust, Sarah and the children, were staying with her parents, unable to look at him the same way. John knew he had brought this on himself. His past action had consequences, and he had learned the hard way that using people comes at a high cost. Days turned into weeks, and John tried to make amends. He went to counseling, hoping to understand his actions and become a better person. He wrote letters to his wife Sarah, apologizing and offering help in any way he could. One day, Sarah came to see him. John, she said softly, I got your letters. I see that you are trying to change. John looked at her, tears in his eyes. Sarah, I love you and the kids more than anything. 
I know I made terrible mistakes, but I'm trying to make things right. Sarah nodded. I know, John. It's going to take time, but we can work through this together. With Sarah's support, John continued to work on himself. He visited Amanda in the prison, where she was serving a sentence for her role in the break-in. She was angry at first, but over time, she began to accept his apologies. John, Amanda said during one of the visits, I don't think I will ever fully forgive you for what you did, but I see that you are trying to change, and that means something. John nodded, grateful for her words. Thank you, Amanda. I hope someday you can find peace. In the end, John learned a very hard lesson about the consequences of his actions. He realized that using people for personal gain only leads to pain and regret. With the support of his family and the help of counseling, he worked to become a better person. Amanda, too, began to heal. With time and therapy, she started to rebuild her life, finding new purpose and strength. The story of John and Amanda is a reminder that our actions have consequences and the way we treat others can come back to haunt us. But it is also a story of redemption and the power of change, showing that even the deepest wound can begin to heal with time, effort and forgiveness. Hello beautiful viewers, I always look forward to your insight and here is a quick one for you. If faced with the ultimate test, would you endure immense pain to save those you love or save yourself first at the moment? Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the story, please stay tuned for more and don't forget to share the story with your family and friends whom I want to see it. Till I see you again in the next one. I still remain Tales by Chica. Goodbye.